Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about Catwoman by Joel Jones. But first, I want to remind everyone about the giveaway I am doing where you could win the Catwoman of East End Omnibus. All you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to the channel and comment on any video I post during the month of August. The giveaway lasts throughout the whole month, so any comment on any video posted then is a new chance of winning the Catwoman of East End Omnibus, probably the, the best run on the Catwoman character, Ed Brubaker doing an amazing job writing it, and of course the art by Darwin Cook, always a classic. Now, going from Ed Brubaker's run on Catwoman to Joel Jones's, let's see how this fares. As always, we'll start off by checking out the covers, and here I have the variant covers done by Stanley Arjum Lau. The entire run was collected in three trade paperbacks, which actually did an amazing job in separating the story arcs of the run. So, the first story arc comprised of the first six issues, like I said, with variant covers here by Stanley Argerm. If you want to see more Argerm variant covers, I do have a video showcasing my entire Argerm collection. I do hope you'll check that out. As we can see, he did an absolutely amazing job here. I mean, how can you complain? having some fun with issue 6 here, uh, a very special uh, Christmas cover. The second story arc was between issues 7 and 13, with uh, issue 7 here having a variant cover done by Ben Oliver. Now, we're gonna jump ahead because I'm missing issue 8, and issue 9 was actually one of those fill-in issues written by Ramvi. But again, Joel Jones returned for uh, Catwoman issue uh, 10, and Arjum returned as well with his variant covers. And again, just an absolutely amazing job. If you want to see even more Arjum, <laughs> Besides that uh, collection, I also have a video showcasing my top 10 favorite variant covers done by him. So uh, yeah, you could say I'm a pretty big Arjun fan. I mean, just looking at this cover specifically, how can you not be absolutely gorgeous? So here we have issue 13 ending the second story arc and the beginning the year of the villain we'll talk about that later now we're gonna jump ahead even more because issue 14 and 15 again fill in issues by uh, ram v and uh, then i'm missing a bunch <laughs> So here we have issue 19 with a variant cover by Ian McDonald. And finally, the last issue, issue 21, again Ian McDonald doing the variant cover. And wrapping things up with the annual, finally we get a cover by Joel Jones. Okay, so this run follows Selina right after she'd left Bruce in Batman issue 50, before their wedding, and like I said, it's split into three parts, three story arcs, and uh, the first one, the first six issues, is just great. The first issue specifically might be one of my favorite first issues ever. Immediately we get to see Joel Jones on art, the colors by Laura Allred, and it's just gorgeous. And what a way to start an issue, a whole run, with Catwoman here, 
just shooting at uh, some cops, but uh, come on, that doesn't really uh, feel like her, right? Well, right after that we see Selena here, she'd moved to Via Hermosa, and uh, she's basically spending all her nights, uh, nights gambling away a ton of her stuff, uh, trying to distract herself, of course, after uh, she'd left uh, Bruce. Via Hermosa, of course, is an actual city, is uh, the city capital of the Tabasco state in Mexico, and here we see the governor of that state with his wife uh, during an interview, and uh, we'll get to see how they play a much bigger role. In, uh, in this entire run. So uh, again, we get to see what Selena's been doing, we get to see uh, her new nemesis, spoiler by the way, <laughs> and we get to see Catwoman just killing cops. And again, these are just like the four, uh, first four pages. Of course, since uh, Catwoman's identity isn't all that secret, the cops uh, try to arrest her, she doesn't take kindly to that, and uh, here we see again Selena meddling with another cop. <laughs> Where have you, we seen uh, this before? Well, in a bunch of her runs. <laughs> so she makes a run for it. And going back to the governor and his wife, I mentioned that, again, spoiler, but this will be uh, Catwoman's arch nemesis throughout this entire run, because as we see, she is just, I mean, how can I even describe this? And again, the art here. Joel Jones doing such an amazing job uh, introducing a character, especially the villain of the story. Just wonderful how she basically takes herself apart to reveal her true self. And we get to see who the first Catwoman was, the one that killed the cops at the beginning of the issue. Now back to Selena, and uh, she's staying at the warehouse of a pawn shop because, again, she's basically spending all her nights gambling away all her stuff, and she has a lot of stuff. <laughs> the pawn shop run by this uh, young man and his aunt, and like I said, if you'll take anything away from uh, Joel Jones's run and Catwoman, let it be the art and specifically this panel right here. This is the most beautiful Selena Kyle we'll ever get. I mean, I don't think it's even up for uh, discussion. I mentioned Darwin Cook and of course he's a classic, but come on, just look at this. And again, there are just so many things happening in this issue. So we get introduced to Selena's new life, the backstory here, the new characters surrounding her, and of course, callbacks. Here we see Alfred mailing her uh, her uh, Catwoman uh, costume, and just again, she was trying to uh, distract herself during the night where when she can't sleep by gambling well this definitely didn't help so she needs a new distraction here so she decides again just to look at the art man she decides to follow the catwoman imposter and see where it takes her and we'll see that imposter is not alone. And here we see Copycats Part 1 and the credits. Again, Joel Jones on art. 
writing the story and Laura Allred with colors absolutely gorgeous. Now, despite the first story arc being named copycats, the actual copycats don't really matter. <laughs> so, Selena meets them at the end of the first issue and she immediately dispatches them. Again, she's, uh, they're not all that important. And uh, here we'll see in issue 3 who actually is important the governor and his entire family, the Creels, who actually run Via Hermosa, both officially, again, uh, he's uh, the governor, and unofficially, illegally, uh, with everything uh, suspicious and illicit that happens there. So, of course, Selena goes to meet the governor's son here, and he makes her an offer uh, of uh, employment and we get to see what um, the Creels are up to in Via Hermosa. They're basically, I mean, uh, despite all the usual illegalities, uh, they're also distributing this drug here, uh, which is a fan favorite, it seems, to the elites of the city. So again, the Creels make uh, Selena a employment offer. She d uh, decides to refuse, and uh, the drug doubt oh, uh, elites don't take too kindly to that. And we we'll get to see. I mean, just look at it. She's being thrown out a window onto her, her car. And we'll get to see an aspect that's very common in this entire run. Selena's getting her ass kicked a lot in here. Uh, and uh, here we get to see the governor again, his wife. We get some backstory uh, for her. Uh, how she got started, how she got where she is. And we get to see where she is going, because this dude might be the governor and he might run things officially, but behind the scenes, like we saw in the first uh, issue, things just aren't what they seem. By the way, so the art, of course, done by Joel Jones uh, in these first six issues, but we also get to see so when uh, uh, Reina Real uh, recalls her backstory here, the art being done by Fernando Blanco, and Fernando Blanco will do the art, will be the backup artist for this uh, run uh, in quite a few other issues. We'll get to see that. So Selena, again, getting her ass kicked. I mean, this run just pummels her uh, and still she uh, tries to fight it off because here we see a new element well new <laughs> another element being introduced here here we get to see her sister maggie again and like i said uh, this first run really showing us where Joel Jones wants to take the the character, where uh, she wants Catwoman to go, introducing her to new, uh, this new place, to these characters, bringing again her sister Maggie back, uh, really great stuff, and I just think she handled things beautifully. So here we get issue six. Selena has settled in into her new place, met the new characters, got her ass kicked, <laughs> now it's time to settle some things, and here we have Catwoman issue 6, and the first big battle between Catwoman and the reels, Catwoman just attacking Reyna uh, during one of her parties, Again, the cup, I don't know what's with uh, Selena, 
attracting the cop's attention. <laughs> Again, just attacking her. Things get pretty crazy. Uh, and uh, w another thing that I do like about this, so I mentioned Catwoman gets her ass handled to her. Uh, there's a lot of action in this. I love it. Uh, on top of Joel Jones's impeccable art, I mean, just wonderful, wonderful things. Again, the first big battle between Selena Kyle and Reina Real, and uh, I don't want to spoil it, but of course, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be much of a surprise that, uh, hold on, Catwoman comes out on top but again things really happen in this issue and it's a great finale to the first story arc again copycats gets a high recommendation from me now the second story arc between issues 7 and 13 is a lot slower and a lot of people started to complain here I didn't really mind because I got what Joel Jones wanted to do here. She was basically setting up the third and final act. But uh, looking at this, uh, this entire second uh, story arc is just uh, Catwoman stealing two artifacts. And uh, honestly, for uh, that many issues, it kind of isn't enough. You know, again, it's really slow and it really takes its time. But uh, I did want to highlight uh, this. We get a guest appearance from the penguin. So uh, he gets picked up at the airport and uh, the driver just talks and talks. And he goes, uh, uh, stop the uh, pull over, stop the car. And uh, he, uh, the driver pulls over and bang. Here we have the penguin, and <laughs> I just really loved this uh, cameo. Uh, again, we get to see more of him, we get to see more of uh, Reina, but again, just setting up things to come, and uh, the actual things that, that are happening uh, here are just moving really, really slow. I mean, we get a car chase that basically lasts four issues, and it's really cool, and the art is great, just look at it. But again, four issues for a car chase. <laughs> again, I understand where the complaints uh, would come from. Again, Joel Jones was doing something here, she was setting things up, uh, but uh, really slowly. We also get in each issue here some snippets of uh, Reina and we get to see what she's doing and again things will pay off but uh, and things will get crazy but uh, very slowly. Fortunately, things do pay off in issue 13, so the last issue of this story arc. We get to see what those uh, two artifacts that uh, Selena stole throughout this uh, story arc uh, actually do. We get to see what Reina has been up to, and uh, again, things get really crazy, and uh, even better, things set up even crazier uh, things. Uh, issue 13 here, like issue 6 that ended the first story arc, uh, highly recommend this. It's a really strong issue. Again, the action, the art, uh, great stuff all around. <laughs> I Oh my god. So, the action and the promos. <laughs> but again, things get uh, get crazy uh, with Catwoman and with uh, Reina. 
I love this, but I also hate it. Because at the end of the issue, besides setting up things for the main Catwoman run, it also sets up things for the year of the villain, which was an event which led to another event called Event Leviathan, which led to uh, Scott Snyder's Justice League run, which ultimately led to Dark Knight's Death Metal. We will be checking that uh, um, miniseries out, but uh, Year of the Villain was running through multiple series and uh, honestly, it just ruined this one. So I mentioned how Joel Jones made her second story arc a lot slower because she wanted to set up her third and final act. Well, Year of the Villain here just derailed that, made Catwoman into something she wasn't. I mean, Lex Luthor here basically uh, tells her to go back to her villain roots. She doesn't want that. She gets help from Zatanna to wipe out her uh, mind to be an anti-hero, to be a hero again. It's very weird. And again, it did nothing but to derail Joel Jones's run because so she was uh, she had to end her story arc. She had to do the Year of the Villain uh, stuff. And on top of that, she also had Tom King who brought uh, Catwoman back to Gotham in his uh, Batman uh, run. So this whole Via Hermosa stuff was pointless because we already knew where it was going. So while Joel Jones was trying to tell us, oh no, Catwoman isn't a villain, she is trying to be good. She was already good in uh, Batman's uh, run, you know, by Tom King. And again, I don't know how she could have handled it any better uh, than this. By the end, it turned into kind of a whole mess. I mean, this whole uh, third act between issues 16 and uh, 21 was a mess, but uh, it was absolutely 100% uh, this is editorial's fault. Joel Jones th just did the best she could with what she had here. Uh, again, like I uh, say in the title of this, DC really failed Joel Jones here. DC failed Catwoman. It was an entire mess, this whole Year of the Villain stuff. Fortunately, by the end, and what I want you to get from this whole review, by the last issue, issue 21 here, Joel Jones stuck the landing. This final issue, ending the third story arc, ending the, her entire run on Catwoman, like the previous final issues for the previous story arcs, absolutely amazing. Again, the art, top notch, the action, things, like I said, got really crazy. But throughout all of this, Catwoman managed to come up on top and again, kicking ass, looking gorgeous doing it. I cannot recommend this issue enough. I loved it. Again, a final confrontation between Selena and Reina Real. We got to see their first battle in issue 6. We get to see their final battle here. We get to see what happens to some of Catwoman's supporting cast. Some of them don't end up quite well. And again, it's a crazy issue. It's an amazing issue. I highly recommend it. And like I said, what I want you to take from all of this is uh, DC just botched this run um, with their Year of the Villain uh, interference 
in this final arc. But uh, I do strongly believe that Joel Jones stuck the landing and through all of this just uh, got us a satisfying ending. And by the way, if you've read uh, the New 52 run on Ketuman, this retcons it. So uh, at least we get that. That whole run was a mess. So again, we see here uh, the final confrontation between Ketuman and Reina. And we see Ketuman leaving via Hermosa because again in Tom King's Batman run she was already in Gotham so she had to. <laughs> Overall it was an amazing ending. This page throughout all of the mishaps this page made it worth it. To be continued in Catwoman 80th Anniversary Super Spectacular. We'll get to look at it in my next video. Look forward to that. But uh, if you want to watch that review, just know, again, repeating myself for like the fifth time, but I really want you to get the idea. Joel Jones did it right by the end. Catwoman got her happy ending for this run. Before I end this video, I do want to give a shout out to the Catwoman Annual. It was a lot of fun. It was great for what it was supposed to be. But my shout out goes to Elena Casagrande and Jordi Belair for doing the art and colors in this annual. Of course, we get to see them work together on Black Widow by Kelly Thompson. Do check out my review of that. It's honestly one of my favorite videos that I've done. It's one of my favorite runs. Definitely one of the best Black Widow runs ever. Check it out. And again, shout out to Elena Casagrande and Jordi Belair. Amazing stuff with the Catwoman annual. Okay, and that was it for my video on Catwoman by Joel Jones. An amazing start. I felt like Joel Jones had a great voice for Catwoman and for Selina, of course. Unfortunately, DC interfered way too much with their Year of the Villain, with Tom King taking Catwoman back to Gotham before this run ended. Like I said, Joel Jones managed to stick the landing. Her final issue was great. She tied up the loose ends of this run. She gave us a nice look, a great uh, happy ending, first of all, and a nice look to what was next for uh, Catwoman. Overall, I highly recommend this. Just keep in mind that third uh, story arc gets weird with uh, all the interference from uh, DC Editorial. Before I go, I want to remind everyone about the giveaway I am doing, where you could win the Catwoman of East End Omnibus. The giveaway takes place throughout the month of August, and to, to join, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment on any video I post in that month. I'll see you all in my next video, where we'll be taking a look at the Catwoman 80th Anniversary One-Shot Special. Until then, bye.